have that on audits. For example, IGC was recently doing a study on, um, on, on, on audits, so that information is there. Who has done which audit, which work plans, how long the audits are taking, the assessments, ETC, all the old, all, all details about audits, all that data can be obtained. We have that on objections and appeals. We have that on non tax revenues, the stamp duty, motor vehicle, debt corrections, refunds, ETC. So there is a lot of data in, in our systems, specifically the ETAC system. Then for we, the second system is the SCUDA world, which captures customs data. Uh, importers and exporters details are there, details of the exports by commodity name, quantity, value, taxes paid, ETC, that you want to know, it, all that information is there. We have the SAN system. Now the SAN system captures records on expenditures, records on payments to suppliers, ETC, that information is there. And recently they, we introduced the eHub, that is a data warehouse system, it is basically decision support that now links customs data with the domestic taxes data. So you no longer need to extract from customs alone, then you go to, custom, to a scooter world, you, you extract it alone, you just get to data warehouse, you can get every information, both customs and DT at on one click. Then we have the ERP, ERP is Enterprise Resource Planning, it is still under development. Now that system is for corporate social, the corporate services department and it contains data on the human resource. I think it's one area that has not been uh, researched much on uh, URA revenue authorities, human resource capacity. So we have that information there, we have that on human resource. It is going to capture that on procurement, staff payments, integrates all databases across business units into a single database can, that can be accessed by all employees. So currently in URA, we are over 2,500 staff and that data is there. Currently, some of it is manual, but with the ERP that is still under development, it, everything is going to be update, um, automated. Now, in regard to third party information, like I said, for local authorities, data is poorly managed, but um, it is accessible, but not poorly, it is poorly managed. Uh, URA has signed many more use, memorandums of uh, association, uh, uh, understanding, with various agencies, both within Uganda and abroad. There is valuable information there, but like I stated earlier, little has been achieved from that information, from third party information. Why? Because of these jointed systems with no unique identifier. When you go to the different local authorities, you will not get a unique identifier. That's why I said it is impossible to tell which taxpayer paid which license at local government level. So that information is there, but we have not used it and it has not helped us much. I remember Uganda Bureau of Statistics did a study on um, census of business establishment, and when I was looking at that, at that data, URA was almost less than 10% of the businesses that, that established. When we extracted that data from BYU, from UBOS, it did not help us. We gave it to the registration office, and they failed to locate the taxpayers. So nothing was achieved. Then we are at different levels of automation, different departments are at different levels of automation. We currently collaborate with the Campera Capital Stores Authority, but we still have challenges sharing data between URA and the Kampala Capital State Authority because the systems are co completed, they don't communicate. So different agencies have different unique identifiers. But it is something we are working on. We are now emphasizing the use of the national identification number. I hope maybe, maybe after five years or 10 years, we shall be able to integrate some of this data, but currently it is tough. Then the other challenge has been institutional confidentiality clauses. You'll go to Bank of Uganda, they have their confidentiality clauses. So even if the Income Tax Act tells us that URA has the right to access to that, all that information, it is in fact just in the Income Tax Act. When you go to on ground, getting that data is really a serious challenge. You cannot get the real-time data as at now. Poor management of MOUs. Uh, yes, we have all the MOUs, <coughs> but um, I think this is one of our findings that we did in... Um, in the high net worth in video study. These MOUs, you'll find them in uh, maybe the legal department and us who are supposed to use them are not even aware that they are there. So at times, even when you go to these agencies, some people will keep telling you, well, we don't have an MOU, but when it is somewhere seated on, in, on someone's table, then, then an implementation of some MOU provisions, uh, some of these documents are signed and then put there and people forget all about them. Then the research studies and the impact that have been based on administrative data. One is the high net worth individual study that was done collaboratively. It was a very successful study. 
I think it's one of those top studies that have helped us in URA. Uh, ICTD had a very good window. Um, unfortunately, I told it's no longer there. It was open. Uh, where they tell you become an ICTD researcher. So me, when I saw it, I just throw there my, I, I just put there my proposal. Unfortunately, Wilson was very positive. You see, these calls for for proposals are good, but most likely you'll hear little from the African people because first of all, they fear to compete with uh, <laughs> with people maybe with PhDs. So you re, very rarely will proposals coming from Africans. But I really liked that window. I submitted a very raw proposal. In fact, I think it did not even have references. Me, I just wanted to try. Wilson, you thank him on my behalf. He was very positive. He encouraged us and got us a researcher that we worked with on this project. Um, it had four objectives. We faced it, and we did this in two phases. The first objective, the first phase captured the two objectives, where we wanted to categorize, identify potential high net worth individuals in Uganda, and finalize the the, the, the legal and administrative strength and weaknesses in taxing high net worth individuals in Uganda. <coughs> and then the second, of, the second phase, which I'm currently concluding, I think actually I was supposed to send the report by 30th June, but I was overtaken. I hope they, they don't penalize me. But we, 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 have, we are setting the criteria for the identification of high net worth individuals in Uganda and documenting the processes and the framework for taxing high net worth individuals in Uganda. The results are about to be shared. I have the preliminary ones, but uh, we shall share them after giving uh, our funders the report. So in the first phase, many things came out. Really interesting statistics came out. We found very many potential high net worth individuals and in all sectors of the economy, both private and public. We saw personal income taxes largely untapped, currently contributing, they were contributing less than 1% in domestic taxes. We saw really striking statistics in our own data. 88.52% uh, of individuals purchasing land worth millions of Uganda shillings, but paying no income taxes in a number of financials, like you can see there. We saw politicians and civil servants owning very large companies, not paying any income taxes in, um, in the URA. Uh, and even their companies that were, that were associated with them were largely non-compliant. All the things came out from that. There are many. What I've reported there, I think, is even less than 10%. You may need to, you, you can access the paper from the ICTD website. For the projects that we have been doing with um, ICTD, we produced two reports. The first report is um, the, the ICTD working paper, that one we give it to them. And then we also do our URA report in our own simple English simplified. Okay, so, sorry. So um, we found a mismatch, mismatch between customs and DT taxes, people paying 8%, contributing 8% in customs, but less than 1% in DT. We, there are quite many. And the legal framework was sound enough to tax them, but uh, even the administrative framework had a number of strength, but with um, a couple of gaps. The achievements, I'll rush through this, we saw Immediately we finished this study, uh, DT management immediately took it up. We shared those striking statistics with them and immediately took it up and formed the high net worth in video unit. It is now operational and intelligence units. And secondly, the research capacity was greatly uh, boosted. Um, this is something we did not tell ICT at that time, but um, in the second phase, I saw my team that I worked with really improving in their writing. We are used to urge with them in the first session phase, but at least this time they have improved greatly. So you also extend our appreciation to the to ICTD. Uh, initially, we only had 17 individuals in the large taxpayers' office, but with that unit, we are currently focusing on 118 as our potential high net worth individuals. The study has also um, been welcomed by a number of revenue agencies. At least I saw a mail from Kenya, a mail from Ghana, and some gentleman from Tanzania uh, also expressing interest to do a similar study. And the press, I saw, because of the striking statistics, I saw many newspaper articles coming out because of that paper. And the revenue that we collected because of that was also, it grew up normally. When you look at those statistics, I think I'll share the presentation of it. I have less than five minutes. But we saw income from rental growing abnormally. Rental income tax, it grew abnormally because of that project. The second study I should talk about, it was still a collaborative study between URA and the Minister of Finance. Now, we collaborated with the Minister of Finance because the study, oh, three minutes, ah, 
I think this one, <laughs> I'll leave them. But from this study, most of all the recommendations actually have been re um, implemented in URA. In fact, in URA, one thing when we are designing our business plans, we get all the recommendations from the different researchers, put them in people's business plans, put them every year. The Minister of Finance, Tax Policy Department calls for research for tax policy proposals, uh, approach, our business plans are sector focused and they, uh, they came because of the compliance studies that we're doing in URA. IGC and URA collaboration, they are doing a study on, on VAT and quite a lot of things have come out, many things have been implemented and a lot of them actually has come in because of their study, because of time I'm not going to those details. But we have also done regional reports, I think I wish Nara was here. We have the ATAF report coming from, um, I think, around 21 countries. And all these are being based on um, administrative revenue data. It is, it is a very rich report for comparison of revenue performance. We have the RATIC report. All these are regional reports. I will share the presentation, read more about them. Now, our research strategy, one is we, um, we are for collaborations. So, like I started earlier, if it is a research external URA, we are emphasizing collaborations. We need to learn and we also need to appreciate the external researchers. In terms of collaborations, we have internal collaborations. So, the research department of URA has about 40 staff, but we have scaled this to cover the whole of URA. We have an entire research club. So, people from different departments are participating in this. So, also our collaborations involve management. So, for most of the, the studies we are doing, they first originate for management. We pick the favor from management, we pick what they want us to research about, and then the thing starts from there. Then for external collaboration, like I stated, it is inclusive staff participation in the entire process. And then the other second thing we are doing are administrative and policy briefs. We summarize this because these um, senior management don't really have very little time to read. So we do this, and uh, when I came here, I saw the way you design your policy brief, you really told me. Actually, I'm picking those same papers, taking back home. It is very good. The Unwider policy briefs, I really liked them. So you already talked to me a lesson in the first 10 minutes when I reached here. Uh, but the third one, we share our, our research messages weekly to all your staff. We share that message weekly. We have what we call the strategy corner message. So every week that comes out every Monday. So we keep updating people on what is coming out from our studies. Um, then the departmental research dissemination meetings. Um, every time we finish a study, we target the, the department, we go and present in their monthly meetings. And then we publish annual research bulletins every year. All the researchers are put into one booklet, which we call the annual research bulletin. Lessons learned. As a person, revenue authorities have data is an asset to them, but it is extremely underutilized. It is extremely underutilized. And um, one thing I've noted is, yes, the compliance gap is high, but um, we can solve the compliance gap if we only look at our own data. At times we go far, the revenue is within the data, as a matter of fact. Uh, results from the study, from data analysis are always a shock to many. When we produce these statistics to management, they, at times they can even ask you, where did you get that data from? I remember a time when I just joined URA, we were doing the pay reports with uh, Stephen, and I presented a very big company that had spent almost nine years without paying in tax. And one person from <laughs> DT said, that is wrong, boldly in a, in a very big meeting. That is wrong, where did you get that? I told him, just check the e-tax system. We checked, and there was no payment. So at times, the results from that analysis appear as a shock. For people from these revenue agencies, please, kind of, you don't need to go far get your own data, there's a lot of revenue there. And uh, like I started earlier, collaborative researchers with ICTD have done us great, the skills and the revenue impacts, and many other things that have come out from there uh, that have really done us a lot, my time is up. But um, the other research uptake, is, research uptake is still low, and uh, I propose quite a number of issues that can be done to improve our research uptake because of time. I should say thank you. Thank you very much.